Hello, my friends, and welcome to the 10 Minute Book Talk, where three best selling authors talk all things bookish with you for 10 short and sweet minutes. I'm your host today, Rachel Linden, and I'm joined by the somewhat giggly Marie Bostwick. And uh, usually we have Catherine Ray with us, but she is on this big book tour to promote her new book. And so she's not with us today. But we have a distinct pleasure from across the pond. We have Virginia Heath, who writes absolutely delightful Regency rom-coms. She's going to tell us about her uh, her latest release, which is Never Wager with a Wallflower. And I'm in the middle of reading it. And it is just delightful. Like, I can't wait to crawl into bed and just read a few pages because it just makes me happy. But she also has some exciting news and some upcoming news. So we are excited about that as well. So Virginia, welcome. And can you tell us a bit about your book? Hello. Um, first of all, I think I should tell you the accent is real. I'm coming to you from London. Um, <laughs> so, so many people go, oh my God, she's so engrossed in her writing. She's even got the accent. No, I was born with it. So what can I tell you about my book? Um, Never Wager with a Wallflower, which I just so happen to handily have here, there is the go. third in my Merrywell Sisters um, trilogy of books. They, they're, it's about three sisters, um, all named after goddesses, um, Minerva, Diana and Venus Merrywell. Um, and you can read them all as standalones. You don't need to read them at the same time. Um, mm. And basically, they are three girls. I wanted to do, I like to take things out of ballrooms. I get very bored with ballrooms. I get very bored with dukes and earls. And I have them, obviously, but, and I like to play it up a little bit. And so the three Merriwell sisters start off very impoverished, very down on their luck. And they've been abandoned um, quite early on in their lives by their gambling drunkard father. Um and so Never Wager with a Wallflower is um, Venus is hopelessly romantic, is convinced her prince is going to come and has been since she's very young. And, and, is, and is absolutely convinced that her perfect man is academic, he's handsome, he's this, that and the other. But one thing he absolutely isn't, is a gambler. Um, so obviously I had to throw her, a, well, he owns a gambling den. He's not really a gambler. He's more a businessman than a gambler. Um, and also, um, I threw her somebody who that, that you meet in the in the second book in the series, and the pair of them have the most amazing meet cute where one of them is creeping around the gardens in the dark. She thinks he's a burglar and she flies through the air like a screaming banshee and flattens him. And I thought when I wrote that scene, I thought I have to put these two together. So um, it's about Venus and Galahad, Galahad Sinclair, who owns a gaming den. I love it. That's the best <laughs> name ever for a hero. This is so much, this just sounds like so much fun. And yeah, we were laughing because we were, cracking up even before the cameras turned on. So this is just, Virginia's a lot of fun. Her books are a lot of fun, but I want to know, Virginia, what, because you've written in this, you know, Regency is quite a few, what draws you to this period? Um, Honestly, I used to be a history teacher here in the UK. I was the head of history in a, a, a secondary school here, which means I had the dubious pleasure of teaching teenagers 11 to 16. And here in the UK, we have something called the national curriculum and certain topics are compulsory. And one of them is the 1800s, which is the age of the you know industrial revolution. And I had never encountered anything so dull in all the books as I could uh, possible. And so I made it my mission to try and find out if I could teach it in a way that was much more exciting. And as soon as I started scratching the service, I was like, well, why, why are all these uh, textbooks so dull when it's just such a fascinating period of history? Um, so yeah, that's what drew me to it. I had to teach it and, um, it was really boring the way that they were making it, making me teach it. So I've always have been they a bit called of a rebel, you up and, and like, have they offered to help you update the curriculum? Cause I feel like they should. Oh, oh, I wish, I wish. No, the government, I'm still waiting for their call. Still no, no sign, no sign. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe they'll watch the 10 minute book talk and, and they'll realize that they're missing out. I'm here for them. I'm here for them. Excellent. Okay. I feel like we already covered my, my question. So Marie, I'm going to steal your question and say, cool. um, Virginia, what do you think makes a good Regency rom-com? What are the like hallmarks of it? I think 
I think I'm going to spin it back and say, I don't think the genre of the book matters. I think any sort of book where you've got um, that's a rom-com in any way, shape or form or any sort of book for that matter, it starts with the characters. You've got to have two really believable, um, likable, um, flawed characters. And once you've got that and you work out what they both want or think they want, um, you can kind of you can play around with it. But what draws me to writing them in the Regency? Wow, the men wear breeches. I mean, you've seen what what Anthony looks like in Bridgerton, haven't you? With those linen shirts and cravats and boots. And, and the ladies' dresses are quite lovely as well. You know, they disguise a lot of sins, those Empire Lion dresses. And I've got this <laughs> serious crush on Mr. Darcy. In fact, it's so serious. I shall just show you my mouse mat here. It's oh, Mr. Uh, Darcy. Yeah, yeah, it's my mouse mat. Um, I mean, what's not to love about mm -hmm. Colin Firth as Mr. Darcy? So there you go. That's, and he is, the, he is the Mr. Darcy. It's Colin. And I don't want to hear anybody else claiming the title. It's Colin. We I know. know. I know. It's it's I'm with you there. I'm with you. <laughs> yep. yep. All right. Oh. Well, we understand that you have uh, another book coming out very, very soon and that you have some exciting news to share. I do, I do, I do. So I'll show you the lovely, lovely color cover of the new series. This comes out on the 28th of May. Okay. Um, All's Fair in Love and War is the first book in my new Miss Prentice's Protégé's um, series for St. Martin's. Um, and this one is a kind of <laughs> big surprise. Mr. Darcy meets the sound of music. So you can see in the background, there's like kids running around and a giant mad dog called Norbert. Um, so it's it's when order and chaos collide. So yes, so that's um, coming out in May. So I'm really excited about that. And oh. and and then the hot off the press, um, just released news is that Never Wager with a Wolf Hour has been shortlisted for the Romantic Novel of the Year Award here in the UK. So I'm thrilled to bit. I know. I'm I just to be nominated. It. It's always lovely to be nominated. This is will be my fourth nomination. I don't expect to win because I'm always the bridesmaid, never the bride. And I figure if I keep saying that, then someone somewhere is going to go, come on, throw her a bone and give her an award. Yeah, yeah, I, sure. I love British people because I love to watch the Great British Baking Show because you're all so humble. Whereas, you know, Americans, when we make a touchdown, we do a five minute dance that's choreographed. You guys bake the Eiffel Tower in a one third oh. side. You say, oh, oh, it was nothing. I'm quite, I'm quite chuffed at that. I'm quite chuffed. So, chuffed. you know, come on, just like own it, girl. Yeah, own well, it. We are excited amazing. for you and we are cheering you on. Okay, right. so I am, in light of all this good news, I'm going to ask you the question we ask everybody, which is Virginia Heath, what is bringing you joy today? What is bringing me joy today? Oh, a couple of things. I've been babysitting my my grand pup, um, my son's sausage dog, whose name is Bisto. And you can't not be joyous with him because he just runs around and just bites your nose. Um, and uh, I've also, some a friend sent me a box of Fortnum & Mason's um, Royal Blend Tea, which I am an absolute tea addict. Keep your American coffee. Um, and it is just divine. It's absolutely divine. I think I've probably had about 10 cups today and I'm going to go and have another one straight after this. Royal Blend. I'm writing this down. Royal Blend. From Fortnum and Mason's. You've got to get it right, though. Proper. It's, it's in keeping with the Regency. You know, Fortnum and Mason's. Right, right. Right. You have to drink that, of course. Okay. I'm going well, to see if I can find that. You are the first one who has said tea, and that's delightful. I lived in England for a few years. I'm also a huge tea fan. So thank you so much. It was an absolute joy and delight to speak with you. We're so excited about all of your good news. Uh, we recommend that while you're waiting for All's Fair and Love and War to release, that you run out and get Never Wager with a Wallflower so you too can experience. Welcome. Now hold up the book for us, Virginia. The joys <laughs> of the book that has now been shortlisted for a major prize in the UK. Thank you again. And we hope readers and listeners that you will tune in next week for more book talk fun. And Virginia, we'll catch you on the other side of what's going to be a fabulous prize winning session of your life. That's right. Well, one can only hope. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Thank you.